Hi! Good day everyone. Today we'll be learning about chemical fertilizers versus organic fertilizers. And today your teachers will be Giselle, myself, and my colleague Andrine. So today we want to look at what is a fertilizer. So, you know, we all know fertilizers um, are nutrients that we add to the soil to uh, help plants grow. But let's look at a more at a more popular definition for what is a fertilizer. So a fertilizer is an organic or inorganic material applied to soils or water which provide nutrients that increase plant growth, yield, and nutritional value or quality. So let's look some more into what exactly are organic and inorganic materials that we use as fertilizers. All right, so as we mentioned, there are two types, organic, which is natural, and inorganic, which is mostly artificial or chemical fertilizers. So let's check them out. So let's look at what is organic fertilizers first. All right, so an organic fertilizer is made of natural material that releases a supplies or supplies useful amount of a plant nutrients when added to a soil. All right, so name me some, or can you think of some natural fertilizers or some natural materials that we might use in organic farming? We can use like humus, um, we use uh, we use the remain of animals and a lot of other natural things that you might find in the environment once we break them down they can be used as organic fertilizers once it is that it's molded in the soil all right so we are gonna look more into what organic fertilizers are made of so organic fertilizers um, are usually made of plants or animal tissue so whether this be uh, um, plant remains or animal remains um, we can also use animal manure and compost made with plants or animal products so basically a compost heap is when we gather all these animal manure animal tissue plant tissue and we leave it there for a period of time so that we can use it after in regards to having those nutrients in them break down in the soil. All right, and organic commercial fertilizers include dried and pulverized manure, bone meal, slaughterhouse tankage, blood meal, dried and ground sewage sludge, um, cotton seed meal, also onion garlic pepper and vinegar so organic fertilizers can be made of a variety of different natural plant or animal tissue so let's look at some of the characteristics of organic fertilizers all right so nitrogen is usually the most uh, um, the most common nutrients um, with the lesser quantity of phosphorus and potassium. So we all know about the NPK ratio. We had learned that before. So nitrogen is, when it comes to organic fertilizers, nitrogen is majority or has a higher percentage in these organic, um, in these organic compounds. And phosphorus and potassium, not so much. So um, when using organic fertilizers, we're unable to control really um, the percentage of the percentage of the of the different elements. So nitrogen um, is usually predominantly more than the other two qualities. And nitrogen nit nutrients are also made available to plants 
as the material decay in the soil. So they are slow acting and long lasting. What does this mean? So when it is that we have our organic composts, right? Um, and uh, we add them to the soil, they don't break down that fast. That is why we call it slow acting. They don't break down that fast, right? So um, the plants usually take a longer time to get the uh, plants usually take a longer time to get the nutrients from organic compound. But the good part about it is that it's long lasting, meaning that because it takes a longer time to break down, plants have it to use over a longer period of time. All right. They contribute to the organic matter content in the soil. So these organic substances, they um, not only assist plant growth, but they increase the what they increase the nutrients contents of the soil, right? And also does provide um, does provide rich nutrients also for even the organisms that live in the soil. The material is bulky and the exact amount of fertilizer applied to different is difficult to measure. Yes, so we mentioned this before, right, that the material is bulky and we're unable to control um, how much nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium is in an organic fertilizer. Nitrogen is always more than the other two compounds. All right, so what are inorganic fertilizers so we learn about the organic fertilizers now it's time to go over to the inorganic fertilizers so inorganic fertilizers are those from a non-living source right so they're not plant remains they're not animals remains right so it usually include mineral salt which contains plant nutrients in combination with the other elements so the inorganic fertilizers or chemical fertilizers are man-made fertilizers so we're gonna deep dive more on, on how it's different from our organic fertilizers all right so our inorganic fertilizers is manufactured in dry liquid or gaseous form right um, inorganic fertilizers is synthetic like I mentioned it's man-made it's comprised of minerals and synthetic chemicals inorganic nitrogen is commonly made from petroleum right so remember that NPK ratio we were talking about so the petroleum um, we get the nitrogen from a liquid that we call petroleum that we use to make up the inorganic um, compound. Okay, so we're going to look at some characteristics. So, um, inorganic fertilizers are very soluble. It's easy to absorb by the plant. Um, because of its soluble nature, it can be very caustic to plants that cause it to burn. All right, so, so with the inorganic fertilizers now, given that it's man-made, we're able to manipulate how it's used. Right, so, so we're able to control the level of nitrogen, the level of phosphorus, and the level of potassium that we can give the plant. We also, when it's made, it's also made to be very soluble. So in comparison to organic compounds that, you know, take a very long time to absorb um, by the plant, so whatever the plant is supposed to utilize um, the nitrogen or the phosphorus or the potassium to do, right, it takes a quicker time when you're using the inorganic fertilizer. So it's very soluble by nature, plants easily absorb it in their root. In their roots, plants easily use it and you get quicker results. But because of this, like we stated, it can be very caustic to plant, meaning that it can cause it to burn. So because uh, um, chemical fertilizers are usually used in excess, once the plants use what they need, the rest remain in the soil and it can actually burn the soil roots. Yes, that can actually happen. 
Alright, so we're going to watch a very cool video about inorganic and organic compounds and then we're going to hand over to my colleague Andrine and she's going to take it from here. So it's over to Andrine now. Hello everyone, this is Andrine and I hope that you all are enjoying the presentation so far. So let us look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of inorganic and organic fertilizers. So in looking at nutrients, nutrient is very important to plant growth and development. The ultimate reason for using a fertilizer is to supply the plant with these essential nutrients. So with fertilizers in general, that's their ultimate goal to supply the plant with nutrients, whether it may be organic or inorganic. So as it relates to organic fertilizers, they balance the soil ecosystem as well as to boost plant health naturally. A disadvantage to that is that organic fertilizers release these nutrients only when the soil is warm and moist, which tends to correspond with the plant's time of greatest need. However, they also rely on soil microorganisms to break down organic matter so that these nutrients can become accessible to the plant when they slowly release. In contrast to that, inorganic fertilizers provide this nutrition in a plant ready form immediately. However, the concentration of nutrients increases the risk of burning the plant and the rapid release of these nutrients may cause leaching right so this will cause them to go deeply into the soil and below the water table where the plant cannot access them okay so let us look at the affordability of these fertilizers in terms of cost Organic fertilizers often cost significantly more than inorganic fertilizers. This is because inorganic fertilizers continue to improve the soil long after the plants have taken the nutrients they need. In comparison, inorganic fertilizers, they are cheaper, meaning they are cost effective, they are cheaper in short term and it adds less to the soil in long term. Now we are down to the application of these fertilizers. How it is that we apply 
organic versus inorganic fertilizers. Now, even though it is good and important to add organic fertilizers to the soil because they're all made of natural ingredients, when applying organic nutrients to the soil, we are unable to tell what the exact amount of nutrient the plant require, right? Without laboratory testing. But in terms of the inorganic fertilizer, even though it poses several harms to the environment and it can also affect the plant, in applying these fertilizers, it is quite simple because it's always written on the label, right? Because the amount of a given element at the rate of the application are known. Right? It's always on the package, so we know exactly the proportion to add. This is because it was tested and made in the laboratory before application. Now, after all that we have learned, my question to you is, which is more harmful? Let us look a little bit deeper into our inorganic or chemical fertilizers. So though we get the precise nutrient ratio we want with these fertilizers, the leaching process can be devastating to the soil and the excess fertilizer does not break down, which can be harmful to the soil biodiversity, increasing the acidity as well. So with all that we have said, which fertilizer do you think is better? On equivalent basis, organic manures and compost fall much short to chemical fertilizers. As long as fertilizer is balanced addressing to prevailing soil fertility constraints, regardless of source of nutrient supply, both sources are equally effective. Thank you so much for watching. Good day.